I know. I am asking you not to use AI in this class, and yet AI is everywhere, enticing you to use it, promising to make your writing sharper, your work easier, and your life better. How could anyone resist such a helpful robot? Well, as many science fiction stories remind us, when new technologies make promises that seem too good to be true, they generally are too good to be true. So here are nine ways to resist the lure of large language model AI. First, writing is a form of thinking. And if you outsource your thinking, you don't learn. A recent MIT Media Lab study found that people who use large language model AI to write essays don't remember as well as people who simply write the essay. It would thus be better to arrive at the quiz or midterm or final or classroom for those of you planning to teach. Actually having done the writing and thus having some memories to aid you. Second, AI does not actually know anything. Because AI cannot think. I know that is not the way that AI is currently being marketed. But according to two different Apple Corporation studies from October 2024 and June 2025, large language model AI does not reason. Rather, it simply performs statistical pattern matching and then it passes that off as reason. So, sure, AI can create statistically probable sentences, sentences with correct grammar and elevated diction. But it is not good at distinguishing between good and bad sources of information. And it doesn't understand context, which is really important for evaluating everything. So, if you think asking AI will get you the right answer, you're rolling the dice. I mean, sure. It might. Or you might be one of the half dozen students who used AI to cheat on a quiz in my class last semester. Those students got every single answer wrong. And I know they used AI to get it wrong because they all got it wrong in exactly the same way. Indeed, upon receiving a zero on this quiz, one of these students even asked me to check if I had graded the quiz incorrectly. Reflecting, I think, a misplaced faith in the accuracy of AI. Also, as a professional writer myself, I actually notice differences in writing style. Your writing has a distinct voice. It sounds like you. But AI's writing style sounds like an especially cheerful advertising copywriter. I would rather hear what you have to say. And it doesn't have to be perfectly phrased. Because nothing is perfectly phrased. Because you learn to write better by actually writing. And because a record of your thought is far more interesting than AI's eloquent bullshit. And in this class, I am asking you to close read, to pay attention to a writer's choices of words and images, and to articulate how those choices make meaning for you. AI cannot close read because close reading requires an understanding of context. Illusion, morality, human experiences and emotions, all the things that humans bring to reading. AI doesn't understand any of that because, as I say, AI cannot think. And look, if you don't believe me on the claim that AI cannot think, consider this. AI has access to far more than any human could read over the course of many lifetimes. But you don't hear about any inventions created by large language model AI, do you? Now, if AI were truly intelligent, well, given how much AI has absorbed, we should be hearing about exciting, groundbreaking inventions every day. But we're not. Why not? One reason is that large language model AI are plagiarism machines. The entire business model of large language model AI is theft. They take any text available digitally without permission. And thanks to the Atlantic's reporting, I know that they have stolen at least four of my books, 15 articles, and 15 reviews. 
And that's just what I know. I am sure they have stolen more. This biography took me over a decade to write. I didn't grant consent for it or for any of my work to be used to train large language generative AI. So, are you comfortable using a product built on the theft of others' work? For that matter, are you comfortable being used? ChatGPT and other large language AI are free because they are using you to improve the product. When you use large language model AI, you are volunteering your time and your knowledge to teach it. And if you come to rely on these AI, how will you cope when you have to pay for it? Indeed, what does relying on large language model AI do to your brain? When you stop playing basketball or the piano or chess, you gradually unlearn how to play basketball, the piano or chess. You get worse at them. So what do you think happens when you stop thinking, when you outsource your thinking to large language model AI? What will happen to your ability to think? Sustaining our cognitive muscles requires friction of the difficulty of grappling with the challenge. If we delegate to AI, then humans' unique strengths, our capacity to think and to imagine, will wither. If we outsource our thinking, we outsource our humanity. And I want to see your humanity. In fact, I would rather see your humanity than see something that is grammatically perfect but devoid of thought. Hey, and speaking of consequences, what's large language model AI doing to the planet? Because you see, training AI requires the use of hundreds of thousands of servers, and the vast majority of electricity powering them comes from fossil fuel-based power plants. According to the MIT professors who co-authored a study on the subject, globally, the electricity consumption of data centers rose to 460 terawatt hours in 2022, which made data centers the 11th largest electricity consumer in the world between the nations of Saudi Arabia and France, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And the need for energy does not disappear once AI has been trained either. A single ChatGPT query consumes about five times more electricity than a simple web search. AI also has a massive environmental impact in other ways. The water used to cool the servers that power it, and the water polluted via the production of its hardware, via mining silicon, geranium, gallium, boron, and bosphorus. Finally, Canvas is adding AI promising instructors that it will help make our grading easier by doing it for us, which they claim is not doing it for us because, of course, we are then encouraged to check the grading. But I'm not using AI to grade or do anything related to my teaching ever. Indeed, I will disable AI on Canvas for as long as Canvas allows me to keep it disabled. Because using large language model generative AI to respond to your work would say that I think so little of your ideas that I am outsourcing my job to a robot. But your learning requires my active involvement too. I want to get a sense of what you're learning, what you're not learning, what questions you have. That's why I teach. That's why I design the class and all its assignments myself. So if you are tempted to use AI, and I'm sure you will be, think of what using it says to me. Also, of course, using AI is cheating, both because it is not your work and because AI typically does not show its work. It borrows without attribution, which is the actual definition of plagiarism. I'm actually not against new technology. My mother, who is one of my heroes, was a computer programmer in the 1960s and then a computer educator for most of her career. I have been using computers since 1979. I launched my website in 1997. I am talking to you now via a video on YouTube. And I see the same hype that you do about AI, you know, that it makes you more productive, it makes your sentences better, it makes your life happier. But don't believe the hype. Believe in your own ideas. Develop your capacity to express those ideas. Think. Believe in your humanity. The promises of AI sound too good to be true because they are. Mm -hmm.